So I've got this 2006 Chrysler 300. Just got dropped off for two problems. The first one is uh, the owner said the serpentine belt squeals very loudly on cold startups, basically. He said once the engine's running for, I don't know, like 20, 30 seconds, it tends to go away. And as long as everything's hot and it's been running, the noise doesn't show back up until a cold start. So of course he just dropped it off. So I tried to start it, you know, two or three times and it doesn't make the noise. I'm gonna have to wait till we get to our next cold start. Uh, but the second issue is he said he has a clunky noise coming from up front, specifically the front left side. So it's gonna be over here on the driver's side. And I've only driven this thing like half a block and I could hear it clunking away like crazy. I'll let you guys listen. Hopefully you guys can hear that it sounds pretty bad. Now on these Chrysler 300s and these and the Chargers and Challengers of this vintage, well I don't, I don't know about Challengers, <laughs> but uh, these cars have a really big issue with the stabilizer links and the sway bar bushings. They are constantly going out and causing a similar noise. I think I did them on this car once before, but it's been a few years so it's very much possible that uh, they are bad once again. And one other note is the brakes on this car. There isn't much confidence in the brakes. It just doesn't feel great while trying to stop. I did notice that the rotors have a ton of rust on the mating surface where the pad goes against the rotor. Uh, that's not good, but at any rate, it's not here for brakes. And in case anyone's wondering, this turret has over 234,000 miles. That's a lot of miles, guys, for a Chrysler. So it's the next day. As you can see, you got the hood open. And I'm looking inside of here, guys, if uh, you guys don't remember, this is the car that I replaced. The thermostat housing, the radiator hose, and possibly something else. I'll put a link in the top right-hand corner of this video, the last time I worked on this car. But before we actually started up to listen to this uh, belt squeal, I just wanted to have a quick look. The belt doesn't look horribly old, I don't see like i know you guys can't see crap but i could barely see there's too much sunlight today the uh the belt itself i don't see any cracks or anything on it but one thing i am noticing the alternator has a ton of rust on the pulley you see this and it looks like that rust is even inside of the grooves of where the belt rides so that's not good that could cause noise Yeah, I can hear it. It sounds like it's coming more from this side, not so much where the alternator's at. It sounds like over here somewhere. Honestly, to me, it sounds like it's either this idler pulley or the tensioner right there. I got a pretty good feeling that if we were to remove that belt, we're going to find that some of those bearings on the pulleys are just dried up and no good. And that's what's causing the noise. It's probably going to need like a new uh, tensioner pulley as well as a idler pulley. That's where it sounds like it's coming from me, like that little area right there. So I got the car in the garage, got the serpentine belt off of the car, and this idler pulley right here, it's very loose, and it even makes noise right now. So I'd say this uh, pulley needs to be replaced. And then as far as the tension, as you can see, I got the belt out of the way and suspended over here. So it's not touching the pulley that's on the tensioner at all. So this is a pulley right here for the tensioner. I'm going to go ahead and try to spin it. As you can see, it really doesn't want to spin. There's a lot of resistance. So, yeah, that's not good either. And like I said, when I was listening to the noise, it really sounded like it was coming from this area right here, the center of the engine, not from back here where the alternator is. Even though I don't like the alternator pulley, I don't like all the corrosion that's on it. 
but I don't think that's the cause of our noise. But I tried spinning the alternator by hand and I don't hear any weird noises coming out of it. So we're not going to worry about that for right now. And while I'm in here, this thing needs a new air filter and a throttle body. I think it could use a cleaning. So I'm going to talk to the owner about that, see if he wants to do it. The belt doesn't look that bad, to be honest. But if we're chasing a squealing noise, guys, I think it's a safe bet to just replace the belt, even though this one doesn't look bad and it certainly looks reusable. Now, like, um, for example, if we were in here replacing a alternator because it's not working properly or a water pump because it's leaking, I would 100% use this belt. But the fact that we're chasing a squealing noise and belts can sometimes be the cause of a squealing noise, just replace the belt. So I took off the front left wheel and I started looking for things that would cause this clunking noise. And guys, I'm not really seeing anything. It's got the classic aftermarket strut assembly. You know, it's all painted blue. Uh, but the thing is, it doesn't look like it's moist around where the uh, shaft goes into the strut body. Um, so even though it's, you know, it's not a quality part, it doesn't appear to be leaking. So I just don't want to jump to assumptions and just say, oh, replace the strut because it's cheap. You get what I'm saying? Stabilizer bar bushings. I checked my records and I put them on this car in 2019. We're currently in 2023. So they haven't been on there that long. So I put the wheel back on it and decided to go out for another test drive. But I think it's also important to get on a fairly smooth road. Like this road right in front of me is nice and recently paved. So it's nice and smooth. Um, no noise at all but if i were to shake the steering wheel back and forth as i'm driving i could hear the noise right there and it's not 100 percent but usually when you do stuff like this you're shaking the steering wheel back and forth it's usually the sway bar bushings or even the stabilizer links but the stabilizer links on this car are fairly new maybe about a year old i checked my records and like early 2022 i did the stabilizer links and I did check them right now while I was down there and they still seem nice and solid. I don't, I don't feel any play in them. Uh, but the bushings do look slightly worn out and guys, it does not take a lot for these bushings to start to make noise. All right, so I'm underneath the car and I ended up removing the bracket for the stabilizer bar bushing. You can see we got access to it now. And the reason why I did this, even though we're not replacing anything right now, we don't have any parts is I just wanted to be a little bit more sure about my call on this um, because I'd hate you know for the car to sit here X amount of time I finally replaced a part the car the owner thinks he's gonna get his car back I only to call him and say hey it's still doing the same thing uh, so it's why I took the time to take this off wasn't too bad of a job the first one came out pretty easy on top but this bottom one was uh, stuck in here pretty good it's why I had to get the propane torch out anyways without the pressure of the bracket holding down the bushing we could see that this bushing is actually very loose. You can actually hear the play. So you can imagine when you're driving that is magnified or amplified if you will. This bushing is very loose. It should fit nice and snug and it's not. There's a ton of play right here. So um, I feel a lot better about making a call on these bushings. I'm going to go ahead and get a measurement of the bar. Because when you buy these bushings, they do sell them in different sizes. So let me get my digital calipers. We'll measure up the bar and make sure we order the correct bushing for this. I got my digital caliper right here. I'm going to go ahead and measure the bar. And I'm just going to show you guys something. So if I were to go ahead and measure this. Hopefully you guys can see we get about 1.06, right? If you go on Rock Auto's website, you could find a bushing that says for 1.06 and you would think, well, that's the one I need. I measured the bar. But look right here where the bushing actually rides. I don't know if you guys could tell, but this diameter is actually smaller. And I don't know if it's like that by design or if this bar is just worn down over the years from the bushing constantly grinding on it. But if we go ahead and measure this. Guys, that is closer to one inch. And if you go on Rock Auto's website, there's also a bushing that fits this that says one inch. So this is just a little pro tip for you guys, anyone who's doing this. Don't measure right here because you could get a false reading. Measure where the bushing actually goes. And let's just say from factory, this bar was actually a 1.06 all the way across. And, uh, you know, if everything were brand new and perfect, yeah, that bushing would fit perfectly. But since this thing is worn out, I think the correct bushing to put here is the one inch 
inner diameter bushing. All right, so we got the green light from the owner to go ahead and clean out the throttle body and change the air filter while it's here while we're getting the rest of the work done. So we got the new gasket in for the throttle body because I figured if it's coming off, it's going to get a new gasket. And I can imagine this is the original throttle body and the gasket has never been replaced. So let's go ahead and get started with all of this. Classic Chrysler red tab crap. They suck, but it is what it is. Don't force these things. All these plastics are very brittle and old. Let's go ahead and get the air intake tube out of here. Simple clamp. Now if we look inside of the air intake tube, you can see there's a sensor right there. It looks pretty gunky and nasty, maybe like slight oil on it. So I'm going to go ahead and try to clean that while it's off of the car. Just use um, mass airflow cleaner on that one. These appear to be 8 millimeters, and hopefully I don't run into any problem trying to get this thing off. Here goes the throttle body and I'm really happy I ordered a new gasket because this one has seen better days. And here's a really good look at the inside of the throttle body or the back side of it. Look how nasty that looks. With all the miles on this thing, I'm not sure if this thing has ever been cleaned. So one of the first things I wanted to do was remove the old throttle body gasket, clean out the groove. So I opened up the new gasket. And I noticed something right away. This is not the correct gasket. It's way too small. Just not going to fit this car. So I checked the parts list of the parts I ordered from Rock Auto. And hopefully you guys can see this. That says a 2018 Chrysler 300 3.6. This is not a 2018 and it's not a 3.6. I did not order the incorrect part. What's going on here is I also have this car sitting here waiting to get fixed. It's here just for regular maintenance. So I had also ordered a throttle body gasket for that car. So when the box came in today, I just saw the gasket and I just assumed it was for this car. You all know what they say about assuming, right? And here goes the other Chrysler 300 that I have to do some work on. So this gasket belongs to this car. So what that means for me is this is kind of a waste of time. I'm still going to go ahead and clean the throttle body while it's off of the car. But for you, it's just going to be a few seconds and we'll wait till we get the correct part in. So it's about two days later. I did have to put the throttle body back on the car because I had to get another car in the garage. Uh, it's not a big deal. My wasted time is your entertainment. Anyway, we have the correct gasket. It did come in today. And as you can see, it's larger. It has that alignment tab on it. We also got our brand new air filter, which I already installed. I know it's going to have to come back out, but it, it's so easy to just drop it in. So we got that. And we also have our sway bar bushing. So we're also going to do that today. Uh, regarding the tensioner and the serpentine belt and all that stuff, it has not arrived yet. So we'll do that some other time. So one thing I did notice after putting the clean throttle body on is the car was idling a lot smoother. And before, it felt like we had a sticking throttle body, like you hit the accelerator pedal and there was a little bit of hesitation and the car just kind of jumps. And the way it is now, the pedal is nice and smooth. There's none of that jerkiness or anything like that. So the clean throttle body has made a difference. We just go ahead and peel off this gasket from right here. And there we have it. The gasket fits nicely. The auto body still looking nice and clean. Everything looks nice. Let's go ahead and bolt it back on. I did end up cleaning the threads of the bolts so they thread in nicely. One thing I noticed on the bracket for the sway bar bushings is I don't know if you guys can see this, but that is a thick layer of rust. You see that? So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can knock this off with my hammer. I 
as you can see we got a good amount of rust off you just want to take the majority of it off not all of it because i'm sure if you keep going you'll just uh pound this thing into dust <laughs> Uh, so that looks pretty good to me. The reason why you want to remove it is because all that extra rust buildup, it's basically called like rust jacking and it'll put unnecessary pressure on the bushings. So that looks pretty decent to me. Plus we get a stage one weight reduction. All right, so I tried to get you guys a good angle. Let's just go ahead and get this old bushing off of here. There we go. I got the new bushing right here. Now I did put a tiny little bit of grease on the inside of this bushing. Not a lot. I don't want it to squeeze out or anything. I just, you know, just a, like a thin layer of film of grease inside of there. Because you got to figure any grease that sticks out or starts to ooze out of the sides of the bushings, it's going to attract dirt and debris and that's not good for a bushing. Now this thing is very stiff. So this can be a, a mission trying to get this on here. Wow. So I ended up spreading open the bushing enough to get a 15 mil quarter inch socket inside of it. You can see how it's holding the bushing open. And this is a this is a fight, guys. It's more like a hard plastic. This should be enough to get it over the bar now. Sure enough, it is. Seems like it's going on. Pull out the socket. There we have it. So I like to put this groove in the bushing where it's split, facing down. In case any water gets inside the bushing, it has a tendency to drain out, if that makes any sense. So this cover right here has to go on first. Put that in place. And then we could grab the other end of the bracket, put this over. And let's start to get our bolts lined up. Now I'm not going to fully tighten them down because I still have to do the other side. And it just makes it a little bit easier if this side has a little bit more uh, wiggle room. So I'm going to get the thread started on the bolts, but I'll leave them a little bit loose. So I'm just about done here. This is the first side we're working on, the front left side. And the bolts are torqued on. Everything's good to go. And here goes the front right side. Pretty much the same exact thing. Now, before anyone mentions this, I know there should be a heat shield that pretty much covers the bushing, something like this. But it's missing on this car, of course. Everything's rotted away. And when it came in, it did not have these uh, heat shields on it. So I'm not worried about it. Anyway, we are just about done here. All we can do now is go out for a test drive and let's see if it took care of our noise that we had. So this is the test drive after doing the bushings. And guys, I can still hear a rattle coming from the front left side. This is the road that has all the cracks on it, so it makes a ton of noise. And it does sound better, but it's not 100%. This car had more than one problem going on with it, unfortunately. So right now we are just about getting up to the road that is nice and smooth. And let's go ahead and rock the steering wheel back and forth how we were doing before and see if we have that noise. Okay, going straight and let's rock the steering wheel. Nope, I am not hearing that clunking noise. So that tells me the bushings did make a difference. It was only part of the problem. This car had more than one issue going on at the same time and the bushings fixed that issue. But as far as actually hitting bumps, I still hear something on the front left side. It's the next day. We got our new belt, AC Delco tensioner, AC Delco idler pulley. Let's go ahead and get these parts installed. I talked to the owner about the clunking noise and he said just leave it alone it's fine he said he's gonna drive it see what it sounds like with the new bushings on he said if it still annoys him then we'll deal with uh possibly changing the strut or even maybe even just taking apart the strut to confirm whether it's bad or not you know it's one of those things sometimes i do that for customers because honestly sometimes it's just cheaper to uh take something apart and to say yep this is bad for sure let's change it or nope this is working just fine let's just put it back on and we'll look elsewhere for the problem if that makes any sense all right so this tensioner takes a 3 8 drive ratchet to uh remove the belt it's a lot easier if you do this with a breaker bar but it'll work 
there we have it that's all we need we'll get our tool out of here uh, this is interesting i don't see a bolt for that idler unless unless it just has a small cap on it there we have it there's a cap covering up the fastener all right so this one's going to be a t50 i just checked it and it seems to fit pretty snug oh this thing came off super easy it's already off <laughs> barely an inconvenience uh i'm not going to complain i can't sit here and talk crap i'm like super happy it came off because this uh i'm not a fan of anything with a torque set on it especially if something's going to be torqued down tight Sometimes they're not even torqued on tight. It's just over the years with corrosion and they just get pretty nasty, guys. And there you have it. There was the Torx Fastener T50. See, it's got some sort of a plastic washer on it. And then just a bearing on a plastic pulley. I'm sure you guys can hear that. Let's grab the new one. I should have checked the part. Hopefully it matches up. Looks to match up. It's the same diameter. Again, another plastic pulley. And of course, this one is not going to spin freely like the worn out one. Because when the bearing is brand new, that's just how they act. There is some resistance. They'll spin a little bit and then stop immediately. But something tells me I should put some blue thread locker on this. Not a lot. Just a little dab and, you know, that'd be enough. Sorry, I would get you guys closer, but there isn't much space here. All right, everything looks great. It uh, snugs right up, no issues at all. I don't know if the plastic cap is gonna fit on this part, we'll find out right now. And that's a negative. Yeah, you could see on the original part, it has like a little lip right here to grab onto the cap. The new one does not have that. All right, so here goes the tensioner right here. I got the new one, I already checked it. It looks to match up. And I did check this bolt, it is nice and tight. You gotta double check things like this. Just don't assume that they're tight because uh with my luck anyway so it looks like it comes off pretty simple seems to be a 15 mil bolt that's holding it on and that came off super easy you know what my snap-on ratchet for a few years now has been skipping not only the gears inside but you know the flex head ratchet doesn't always hold you're using it and it just it slips so i've tried tightening up this joint it doesn't really matter so something's wrong with this joint right here. It's got to be worn out, the little teeth that it grabs onto, as well as actual gears inside the ratchet. Now, I did buy this. I am the original owner from a Snap-on truck back when I worked in the shop. And um, I don't know, I've never had to return anything through Snap-on. So if anyone has any information on how this works, please leave a comment and let me know. Because do I have to track down the original Snap-on guy that sold this to me? Or can I go to any Snap-on truck? You get what I'm saying? Or can I just go online and do it? I have no idea. So if you have experience with trying to warranty out a Snap-on tool, uh, please let me know. Don't know if this thing is loose enough to take it off of my finger. And yes, it is. So we are just about free. Let's show the threads. There we go. Do you hear that? course here goes a new one just like the other pulley I showed you it's not going to spin much stops almost immediately that's how a brand new bearing should be um again I don't see any thread locker on here but I'm just going to put a little bit of blue thread locker on this thing and we'll pop it back on all right now there is a little alignment dowel you got to make sure that falls into place right there before you start tightening down that bolt we got our new belt right here i did measure it up against the uh, original belt and they are the same uh overall diameter or length whatever you want to call it so let me go ahead and put this on here off camera because putting on a belt on camera is never a good idea you just get frustrated it's stupid <laughs> and there you have it it's all set the belt is installed Let's go ahead, pop in the air intake tube, clamp all this stuff down, start her up, and make sure that the belt is tracking correctly. Sounds good to me. I'm not hearing any weird noises. We're gonna have to let it sit overnight, and then tomorrow, 
I'll check it and see if we have a squeal. The belt looks to be tracking correctly. Everything looks real good. I'm happy with it. I'm gonna go ahead and put on the engine cover and uh, pull this bad boy outside. It's the next morning. It's still cold outside. I'm gonna go ahead and start up the car. See if we have any noise coming from the belt. So far so good, I'm not hearing anything. Sounds good to me. All right, so like I told you guys, the owner said just leave it at that on what work got done. He said he'll drive it around and if if the noise continues to annoy him with the clunking up front, he'll bring it back and we'll look into it even further. Even if it means we got to take the strut assembly off of the car and disassemble it meaning taking the spring off of the strut to see if the strut is blown out so i think that's gonna be it for this video guys i'm gonna go ahead just leave this turret here and the owner come pick it up and this will be it for this one so like always thanks for watching